before I start, I would like everyone to take a minute and close their eyes and just imagine what I'm about to tell you. So you wake up and the walls around you are crumbling. The ceiling above you is caving in. The city's tallest building now stands just inches above the ground as a pile of concrete rubble. You go outside and find your family. There are people running through the streets, screaming. There's a tank rolling through and soldiers close behind it. You go get on a bus and they tell you that they're gonna take you to a better place. But the bus is dirty and old and crowded. There are people jammed in three to a seat. There are mothers comforting their crying children. They take you to a camp and tell you that it is your home now. But there's no electricity. There's no running water. People and tents are scattered everywhere. You eat and sleep on the ground. But at least you now are safe and with your family. This is a VR experience that any of you guys could try, and it lets you walk in the shoes of a Syrian refugee who flees from her home city that is under attack into this camp to pursue a better life. Now, when you put on a VR headset, you are instantly immersed into a new world where you can experience anything, no matter where you are. You can naturally interact with your world, and you can immerse yourself in the visuals and the audios and the audio cues that are playing all around you. VR, as it is, is an empathy machine. It closes the gap between us and them. It allows us to understand and feel what another person is experiencing through their perspective. Walking through the shoes of a Syrian refugee allows us to empathize with her, to feel for her, to understand her, to experience her life in an authentic way. None of that is possible without virtual reality. Now, this image here went viral a couple weeks ago, and it's of a teacher in a rural Ghana village who is teaching his class how to use Microsoft Word by using a chalkboard. He drew the entire Microsoft Word window on the board, and the students were eager to take notes on everything, because when they got a chance to use one of the old laptops that the school had, they wanted to know what they were going to do. Now, after this image went viral, Microsoft and many of their partners donated to this teacher, but unfortunately, without the correct internet infrastructure in his village, the laptops will never be used to their full potential. Now, with a standalone virtual reality headset that doesn't require internet, and it doesn't require computers, these lap, uh, the headsets can be used anywhere and by anyone. And since VR is already so natural for us to use, the students can adapt and learn everything quickly and then take these headsets home and teach their parents how to use them. Now, with VR headsets already coming to some classrooms around us, the possibilities are endless. Imagine a math classroom here at Moreau where students can manipulate and watch graphs change in real time right in front of them. Or girls in India who from their classroom can experience and walk in the Women's March in Washington, D.C. Or a U.S. history class who can stand in front of Abraham Lincoln as he gives his famous Gettysburg Address. Or even a third grade class who can go walk alongside the dinosaurs that they are currently learning about. Now, virtual reality offers such a unique and immersive educational experience that kids don't have to watch movies on the screen. They don't have to read everything in their textbook. They can be inside what they are learning about. It offers an engaging experience so students retain the knowledge that's being taught to them, even if it's not their favorite subject. Now, with these headsets, education can be distributed to the masses in poor or rural areas. Now, you can upload thousands of lessons and subjects from Khan Academy onto one headset. But the best part is, at $200, one of these headsets is cheaper than the price of a single textbook. Now soon, I'm gonna be leaving off for college, uh, and even though I don't think about it too much now, I know that eventually I will want to talk to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> and so we can call each other, uh, we could text each other, we can even FaceTime each other, 
if they had a smartphone. <laughs> um, but that will never really truly get us the feel of being close to one another. FaceTime is I can see you, but being in VR with another person is I am with you. Now, virtual reality would give my parents and I a chance to be close to each other, no matter how many miles separate us. And if we want to be closer to one another, we can walk with each other in Paris, go to New York. We can stand right next to each other at any world monument that we desire. And while with FaceTime we can't see each other, with VR you can reach out and see the intention of contact with another person. You can see somebody reach out and give you a handshake, give you a high five, give you a hug. And it feels real because you can see the human interaction behind that headset. Now, in the medical field, VR is making huge impacts already in many different areas. So at some children's hospitals, uh, they're using VR to help calm kids who are getting shots. And so a lot of people know it's not the most pleasant feeling in the world. And so in, this, in the uh, scene that the child is watching, a fairy comes up and performs different actions on the child's arm, while at the same time, the doctor is performing the different steps needed to administer the shot. So while the child thinks a fairy is doing something to his arm, he's really getting whatever shot he needs at the time. Now, in other medical fields, doctors are using VR to view brain scans from different areas, different angles, and they can take in much more detail at once than if they were just looking at a normal computer screen. And they can use VR for PTSD therapy for combat veterans in the bottom picture. And doctors have even, made, have even had success with patients regaining the use of their legs by using VR, by playing an animation of the person's legs moving right below them where they would normally be. When the person looks down, it can trick their brain into thinking that it can actually move its legs. You can walk. And so far, it's helped nine people regain the use of their legs. So with all these different ideas in mind, I knew for my capstone project that I wanted it to involve VR. And my idea was that VR should be for everyone because it is for everyone. So one of the places that I did demonstrations at to show that it was for everyone is Baywood Court Retirement Home. And so these seniors all got a chance to try uh, the VR headset. And so I started by explaining what it was, what it did, how it worked, and what they would see. And I had many, many, many different games to choose from, many different experiences that they could see. But most of them picked one. And it was a game called The Blue. And some people tried it earlier. It's just a simple underwater scene where you can view the coral reefs, you can view underwater caves, or you can view a whale that goes right by you. And this experience in particular is not very engaging. You don't do very much. You just watch what goes around you. But I think it was the most popular because it makes them feel free. A lot of these seniors are stuck inside this home for weeks on end. They don't get many visitors. They don't get to go outside very much. But now with VR, suddenly they can go wherever they want. They can go under the ocean. They can go scuba diving. They can go on an Apollo mission to the moon. Whatever they could dream of before is now a reality for them while still staying in their own home. So after hearing all of this talk, my hope here for every, is for everyone to understand how VR can help us grow, how we can become more compassionate, wiser, and more empathetic with one another. VR can bring us closer to one another and to ourselves. It can bring healing and knowledge. Virtual reality can bring us a more equitable world. Thank you.